Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Greetings from Brno, from the new office of Idea Statica, and be most welcome to another series of our webinars focused on concrete. Uh, today's topic is about uh, how to define supports of reinforced concrete structures in our applications. So, let me move to the second slide to introduce ourselves. My name is Adam. I'm one of the team of the product engineers in our company, as well as the main speaker, Petra, who's the expert in the concrete structures within the uh, product engineering team. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so, we're greeting you both and let's get started. We're using the GoToWebinar platform. You are muted by default, but please feel uh, welcome to ask any questions during the webinar that we'll try to ask on the way or at the end of the webinar. You can do that by typing them into the questions panel of your GoTo application. Now, about the agenda, what are you going to see and hear today? Uh, we'll be focused on Idea Statica detail application. And we'll treat the topic of uh, types of supports, means a bit of theory, what are the advantages, disadvantages, and I will show you, or Petra will show you, <clears throat> examples of um, such um, application of supports on the model and compare uh, a few of them to explain how this whole thing works. Um, now, just briefly, what is Idea Statica Detail to you who are not familiar with this application. It's one of the programs that we provide from the Idea Statica software package. Uh, Idea Statica Detail is um, based on finite elements. It's a software or a program <clears throat> dedicated to uh, design and code check uh, structure details of concrete structures. Uh, it uses 2D elements uh, of the finite uh, element method to um, analyze the structure details. And it is can be used for vari variety of applications. Uh, you can see on these pictures here, such as corbels, diagrams, hangings, and, and so on. Um, of course, you can design and code check all the necessary things <clears throat> that you do every day or for special occasions, everything, everything that touches uh, details of reinforced concrete structures. Uh, if you compare this program or this method, the biggest advantage probably is that uh, next to ULS, uh, that is not that complicated to uh, analyze. It can also uh, co-check the SLS state. And of course, with the precision of finite elements. So that's for the introduction. And now I'm uh, giving presenter to Petra. It's going to continue with the uh, theory of supports. Okay, thank you, Adam. I will switch off my camera and share the screen. <clears throat> so I hope you can see it. And let's get started. <clears throat> so types of supports in CSFM. So why did we uh, choose such a topic? Well, uh, we figure out that uh, if you analyze uh, any structure 
uh, any kind of structure. Uh, to create a structural model is not a big problem. Uh, usually we uh, know the behavior uh, of the structure and we know what types of um, elements or uh, method we should use. But the pain is uh, how to define the boundary conditions. Because if uh, the boundary conditions are not defined correctly, uh, then the whole model or uh, the results may not be correct or uh, you can be uh, a, a, your model can be uh, not safe or um, maybe too too safe. So uh, the problem is usually how to uh, subject the structure um, to a load and uh, how to define uh, the right uh, supports. So that's why we came up with this topic. And uh, in Idea Statica detail, there are several types, uh, actually there are five types of supports. So the user might uh, be confused and or maybe it um, doesn't have to be clear uh, for the first side, uh, what kind of support is the right one for your project. <clears throat> so uh, there are, um, uh, let's say, two subgroups um, of the support. Uh, the first one is point distributed, point bearing plate and line support. And the second subgroup is hanging and patch support. Uh, in a minute, I will go through uh, the each support uh, and try to explain and um, uh show some schemes uh and to clarify the theory behind and also uh show the the application of the supports so let's get started the first support is point distributed support it is defined on the edge or within the area of the model and the reaction is distributed into this into the uh area of the concrete detail. The advantage uh, or advantages of this point distributed support are that the stress is not concentrated at one point. Uh, so uh, it is distributed over the area and there are no abrupt changes of stress distribution. Uh, another advantage is that we can uh, consider uh, partially loaded areas. It is uh, possible uh, only for edge-defined support. I will show you how to uh, define or how to take into account uh, such a functionality. And there is also a negative uh, aspect and uh, this is uh, the fact that the assumption of uniform stress distribution is not satisfied at structures without bearings. So usually uh, civil structures or whole type structures are um, without bearings. Um, the application is quite clear. So um, it is right for the supports uh, that enable rotation and the stress dis distribution is uniform under this support. So uh, this assumption perfectly fits um, uh, especially elastomeric and pot bridge bearings. Uh, on, this, on, the, on this slide, on the right part of the slide, you can see uh, a example, a re real life example of uh, pot uh, bridge bearing. Uh, <clears throat> we can also find some bearings in um, uh, civil structures. So the second example. And on the left side, uh, there is uh, depicted a scheme of uh, point distributed support. Uh, note that this, uh, this is only the scheme. Uh, the support is not uh, shifted or there is no space between the concrete elements and the support. It is just for um, uh, this kind of display to uh, get it and uh, understand better what is uh, happening between the uh, support and uh, the concrete uh, detail. 
So the reaction is distributed through this uh, blue um, rigid bonds uh, to the nodes, uh, which are the part of the concrete mesh of the concrete 2D elements. Um, of course, uh, only the green nodes are affected by the support. Uh, so within the width, and uh, the more distant is the node, um, uh, the less is affected by the support. So let me uh, switch to application detail, idea statica detail, and uh, I, I will try to demonstrate uh, how um, I would um, work with this point distributed support. So, um, um, I would use some uh, bridge uh, uh, detail. So, in this case, it is a uh, bridge diaphragm. And um, how to define the support? So, we have the geometry, and uh, the support can be added by this button, um, blue plus button. And the supports are in the middle of this uh, dialogue. So the first one is point distributed support. And here uh, I can uh, define the properties. So I can define the, uh, the width. So for example, uh, on the length uh, half meter, we will distribute uh, the reaction to, to the model. And of course, I would uh, place it farther to uh, farther to uh, the diaphragm. Uh, this support can be uh, fixed or um, it can be a hinge or sliding support. And of course, this is not a uh, um, statically determined uh, structure. Uh, as you can see, there is this warning. So um, I need to create another support so I will do this by clicking on copy button and uh, change this this uh, property measuring from end and I will uh, remove this um, bond in x direction and this is uh, how we can um, work with this supports uh, as I said uh, in the uh, like two minutes ago, uh, one of the advantage was that we can calculate with partially uh, loaded areas. So it is hidden under this uh, check uh, box. So if we check it, you can see that uh, there is this um, um, cone. And we can uh, define the geometry. There is uh, uh, depth and inclination of this cone, and also the reinforcement can be uh, can be defined. I can use different, for example, different diameters and and a spacing of the bars. Uh, these partially loaded areas um, are extremely beneficial for. Uh, details where huge concentrated uh, load can occur so especially especially uh, bridge uh, bridge details uh, need to uh, deal with this and uh, this functionality can or due to uh, this functionality we can distribute uh, this concentration load even more to the concrete detail so uh, the calculation uh, will not uh, fail uh, on crashing of the concrete because we are taking into account that the uh, load bearing capacity or strength of the concrete in compression is increased. So if you are interested more in this topic, uh, we have uh, some webinars or for this uh, functionality, uh, partially loaded areas, so you can uh, look at it if you want. So let me go back to presentation and uh, let's start with the second type of support and that would be point bearing plate. Uh, so it is 
uh, again, a point uh, uh, kind of support. So the reaction in the point is transferred uh, to the model we are still played. We have some scheme also here. Uh, the plate is not checked, it serves only as a transfer device. Uh, the advantage of this support is that if we have a type of bearing that there uh, is a real um, metal or uh, steel plate, uh, we can use this kind of support. Uh, and the disadvantage uh, is that uh, the size of plate uh, significantly affect the analysis. If it's uh, too thin or too thick, so soft or rigid, uh, there could be some problems. Uh, I will discuss about this uh, topic uh, later. But if the configuration is not uh, correct, it could be a source of divergences. So, um, uh, we should be careful about uh, applying uh, this kind of support. Um, uh, it should be applied uh, at the structures where uh, uh, or the plate prevents the occurrence of cracks in concrete. So uh, we should uh, uh, think about that it and somehow it reinforce uh, the place uh, or the supported area, so it uh, we should be careful about this. And um, this plate uh, deforms as it is um, pictured here. So that's why uh, uh, the right uh, practical examples are, for example, roller bridge bearing. I will click on switch to another slide. So we have a real picture of a roller bridge bearing and again, a scheme on the left part. Uh, so again, we have a reaction uh, uh, which is transferred via a steel plate. Uh, the steel plate has uh, its own mesh and uh, by the notes of the steel plate, uh, and these blue um, rigid bonds, it is connected to concrete uh, concrete part of the structure, uh, specifically with the uh, these green nodes, which are the part of the concrete to the mesh. Uh, again, uh, uh, it is the, the bonds are proportional to the distance. And again, it is uh, there is no space between the plate and the and the concrete detail, so it is like in one in a one level. So let's go back to Idea Statica detail and demonstrate um, how to add point bearing plate. So that would be the second type of support. And as you can see, uh, again, we can um, define uh, if it's uh, sliding support or fixed support. Uh, and uh, the most uh, important uh, are the dimensions of the plate. So for example, uh, let's have half of meter wide plate and thickness 100 millimeters. So we can see that it's maybe it's quite thick. So let's have 80 millimeters. And again, uh, we need to uh, uh, position it uh, um, into the real uh, position of the support or bridge bearing in this case. I can also copy this support, change the settings from end and um, <clears throat> cancel this X uh, constraint or X uh, direction. And uh, we have a simply supported bridge diaphragm and uh, now the model is ready for uh, the, running the calculation. 
Okay, so let's go back to the presentation and discuss the line support. So this is the third kind of uh, support in CSFM. Um, uh, it acts as a group of spring supports within defined length or um, length on the edge or uh, in the area of the concrete detail. In general, it could be, uh, it doesn't have to be a line, it could be general curve. Uh, the spring uh, stiffness is determined by the stiffness of the structure above, or it can be user-defined. So this is uh, certainly an advantage that we can uh, take into account a real stiffness of the, for example, of the column, which is uh, actually the support of some beam. And another huge advantage is that there is a possibility of modeling nonlinear support acting in compression only. Uh, so, uh, I would recommend this line support to all kinds of support which does not satisfy the, the assumptions of the previous types. Uh, it's suitable for line supports, as the uh, title says. And um, uh, another, another application can be uh, spring supports of the piles. Uh, which acts uh, in compression only. Uh, here we have a scheme of the line support and practical example. So uh, I will start with the reality uh, that uh, here uh, we have a precast wall uh, member and uh, the support at the at the ends of the wall will be stiffer uh, than the support in the in the middle because here uh, the wall uh, under the analyzed wall can uh, deform so it will affect uh, the conditions here the boundary conditions here so this is a, a very nice example of you of um, line support application. And uh, to, uh, let's talk about the theory behind. So if the line support is defined on the edge of the concrete um, detail, um, uh, there are, again, uh, nodes we, which are connected to the supports. And between the node and the support, there is, uh, we can imagine it that there is a, some kind of um, spring. Uh, with specific stiffness. So this is the group of the supports which are connecting uh, this uh, element. If, uh, if we use the option to define the support somewhere in the area of the concrete detail on some curve, uh, special internal bonds uh, are generated which affects uh, uh, which affect uh, the nodes uh, in the surrounding of this defined curve. So um, the program automatically uh, determine uh, uh, what nodes should be or which nodes should be connected uh, to this uh, spring uh, support. So let's go back to application. I've prepared a, uh, such a wall uh, with the opening and I will create or uh, defined line support. So in general, you can support the whole length of the, of the analyzed member, uh, but I would like to show you that we can uh, define it uh, only um, on the part. Uh, so let's start with uh, from the beginning and the length would be 2.6 meters. Um, uh, this is uh, the settings about the stiffness. So uh, here we have some default stiffness, but if we click on this uh, blue pen, 
uh, we can uh, specify uh, our stiffness, the stiffness which could correspond to the lower supported uh, structure. Uh, and this button, uh, by default, it is turned on. And this is the, the non-linearity that, uh, that the, the um, supports uh, act uh, in, compression, in compression only. Uh, I will create another support, line support, and change uh, the length. For example, uh, I would use here a lower value of stiffness, and then I will copy the first line support and just uh, change the settings measured from end. And this is uh, the line support. And again, we can run the calculation. <clears throat> If it's not uh, on the edge, we can specify the curve here uh, by uh, means of coordinates and uh, it can be uh, supported in the area of uh, the concrete member as it is uh, described, described here. So now uh, we are entering the second subgroup of the supports and uh, its name is hanging support. Uh, so uh, if we use this support, um, the support applied at the hanging is converted according to the rotation to the supports acting in the axis of each hanging branch. Um, and the supports are applied at the point where the hanging branches enter the concrete. Um, we need to say that uh, the part of the hanging part of the hanging protruding from the concrete is not checked. Um, and the advantage is that uh, we can check the construction stage. Uh, there are some disadvantages, like um, the fact that the hanger uh, should be created from the same material like a reinforcement. So it should be uh, made of ripped reinforcing steel. And uh, as I said, um, a lifting loop, uh, it is out of the model, cannot be checked. So this is the that the hanging protruding from the concrete is not checked. Uh, the application is quite clear here. Uh, it is used for precast concrete lifting anchor system and especially um, side operation loop uh, made from reinforcing steel. Uh, before we, uh, uh, before I will show you the the practical example and the scheme of this hanging support, uh, let me remind you how a finite element model in CSFM looks like. Uh, so we have a concrete um, uh, element or 2D element mesh, which represents the concrete. Then these concrete elements are connected by multiple uh, point constraint elements of uh, two reinforcing bars. Um, reinforcement is always 1D element and there is this special um, bond element, this purple one. Uh, so by uh, means of MPC and bond element, uh, the reinforcement and concrete is connected. And uh, here we have the scheme of hanging support. So we have the hanger. Here is the, the support is defined. Program automatically recalculates um, the rotation and uh, put the support at the edge of concrete. And uh, the hanger is connected by MPC elements with the concrete nodes. So in other words, 
uh, the branches of the hanger uh, behaves um, like a reinforcing bars. That's why I uh, showed you a finite element model. And that's why I um, wanted to remind you how it works. On the right side, uh, you can see uh, the real uh, uh, figure of uh, the lifting loop and some drawings uh, of the hangers made of um, concrete, uh, sorry, um, reinforcing gripped steel. So let's go back to detail. Uh, we have this uh, precast uh, reinforced concrete beam with the depth and and I would like to uh, analyze uh, the construction stage where this beam is lifted up and uh, move a design from one uh, side to another. So I will create the hanging support and I need to uh, change uh, the position, of course, and I can also play with the geometry. So let's start with the positioning. So you can try four meters from uh, from the beginning of the of this member, and then according to this uh, legend, I can change the values uh, and for example, maybe L3 could be higher, diameters uh, 10 millimeters. And also we can uh, define the inclination of the support. So let's say 30 degrees, but different direction. So minus, minus 30. And uh, uh, of course, I would need another uh, hanging support on the other side. So I will copy this, change um, the master entity, which is related to, and here we need to modify design. And we have a uh, two uh, hanging support, uh, which can simulate a uh, construction stage. You can also uh, define different shapes of the hangings uh, here in the uh, shape. Okay, and let's move to uh, last type of support, uh, uh, it is called a patch support and uh, it is again uh, defined by uh, a point and around the point there is a specific area through which the reaction is transferred to the model. A uh, reaction is applied directly to reinforcement and this reinforcement uh, should be explicitly specified. If it's not specified, it is transferred directly to concrete. Uh, advantages of this support is again uh, uh, that we can check the construction stage and uh, we can also use this kind of support for modeling of bearing of the latch beam. We can call it also indirect support system. Uh, the application is the same like uh, the hanging, so uh, precast concrete lifting anchor systems. Uh, but here um, the system can be solved differently. For example, if it's a steel plate welded to reinforcement, or uh, if this system is somehow fastened or welded uh, or um, uh, to reinforcement or if the anchor is supported against to the reinforcement, then uh, we can use this patch support. And also uh, uh, the other different type of application is this indirect support, which I will show you in a, in a minute. 
But first, uh, let's go through the scheme. So we have a concrete uh, detail. It's this gray color and reinforcement, uh, uh, vertical and horizontal uh, bars. We defined the support somewhere in the area of the concrete detail. And through the support, uh, these uh, bonds are generated and uh, the reinforcing, um, the reinforcement nodes are connected uh, with the support. The, this support are um, internal support. They are generated automatically. And um, I just use these two different colors to uh, make it uh, clear uh, but uh, they act in the same way uh, and of course uh, the farther it is or the more uh, if it's more distant from the support uh, the less it is um, supported uh, and on the other uh, on the right side of this slide uh, we can see uh, an anchor system of the lifting system. So you can see some anchor and there, there would be some kind of loop and we could operate with this member, but the uh, anchor is uh, fastened to uh, the reinforcement and uh, that's why we can use this kind of support. And uh, the, the second the different um, uh, usage or application of this support is this indirect um, supporting of a beam. So let's call this beam by a longitudinal beam. So this longitudinal beam is supported by this transfer beam. And uh, we would uh, analyze this transfer beam or actually just the section of this transfer beam and want to simulate the, the bearing of the longitudinal beam. I will show you um, in the application. So first, let's start with the um, lifting anchorage system. Imagine we have a precast concrete wall and we want to lift it. So I will use this uh, fifth type of support, patch support and I just need to uh, find the right uh, right position of the support. So, for example, uh, something oh, maybe just one meter, something like this. And uh, by this effective ra radius, I can increase or decrease uh, the influenced area. So. Maybe it's too large. Oh, let's leave it uh, half of meter. And uh, I will again copy this support and uh, refer this support to point number two. So master point will be two. And I will, I will need to correct the sign. So we have a patch support or two patch supports. And notice that there is a warning from the uh, program that there is no reinforcement referred to patch support. Uh, so if we uh, uh, leave it like this, uh, we would uh, uh, apply uh, the load directly to concrete. But we don't want to do this. So let's go to reinforcement. and define another group of reinforcement uh, around uh, the patch support. So we have this uh, possibility to input cage around the patch support. So you can see that uh, there, uh, there are vertical, horizontal and diagonal bars and I can uh, uh, change the diameters the spacing or the numbers 
and also I can define the type of uh, anchorage. So in this case, I would use this welded transfer transverse bars. So that would mean that uh, the reinforcement is welded to the reinforcement uh, of the member. So in this case, it is this wire fabric type reinforcement. Now I can use the diagonal bars or they don't have to uh, be defined. But let's have a diagonal as well and uh, set the same uh, anchorage type. And again, I will use copy function and just change the master. And I can um, define another group of reinforcement just like that. Um, so this is the first uh, application of patch support. And now I will show you uh, the second one. So I will uh, use a template. Yes, so uh, I'm going to create a new project. Uh, the template will be from beams and I will choose this double ledge beam. In a minute or second, I uh, obtain uh, geometry of this model and the patch support is uh, or has been already defined and uh, this patch support uh, can represent uh, that or by this support we can actually uh, support this detail and due to this we can analyze uh, this detail. So imagine that uh, these bearing plates are here for reactions from longitudinal. I will switch to presentation from longitudinal beams. And we can analyze this transfer, transfer uh, latch beam um, in this direction and uh, design the stirrups uh which will uh transfer uh the load from the longitudinal beams um i will go to reinforcement and in this case we won't add another group of bars uh specifically for uh patch support but we will use uh the stirrups here which are defined for um load bearing uh which transfer the shear from the longitudinal direction so um here gb2 it's this support uh is specified to patch load uh support pardon it's just it's either patch load or patch support. So it, uh, in this case, it is specified to patch support. And uh, by this um, checkbox, we say that if it's turned off, uh, then to this support, we have uh, uh, no reinforcement, no additional reinforcement, and the load would go directly to concrete. If we check it on, uh, this support will take into account uh, this GB2, and also GB3 uh, stirrup. And also uh, the same setting is for um, uh, the right patch support. So I hope it's clear and I will leave the application and go back to presentation and uh, talk about comparison of uh, uh three kinds of supports so uh imagine we have a precast concrete beam uh subjected to line support there is some reinforcement defined this is the the stress flow uh uh in the in this analyzed member uh, and we from general or global point of view we got uh, almost the same value in the mid span of the beam 
but the critical part is here, the supporting area. So I um, created three or actually four uh, individual projects and uh, model the support by point distributed, bearing plate and line support and compare the results. And as you can see in this picture, if we define the point distributed support, the stress um, uh, above the support is more or less uniform, constant. But if we used a uh, bearing plate, and in this or for uh, this comparison, I defined quite soft um, bearing plate, 20 millimeters thick. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, rigid plate, 100 millimeter, uh, 100 millimeter thickness, and compare um, uh, the behavior. So, in the case where uh, the plate has a tendency to act uh, a very soft, uh, we got stress concentration uh just in the point where the reaction is defined and uh the plate uh can uh, or has the tendency to punch into a concrete on the other hand uh the behavior for rigid plate is different uh we got the concentration uh at the margins of the plate and uh here the concrete is the uh, weaker, weaker member. And finally, the last uh, type uh, of support, if it's uh, supported by a line support, uh, the stress concentration is uh, located uh, somewhere here at the right part of this of this member, and uh, I would uh, recommend. Uh, this line uh, support for uh, such a project for for this beam because uh, this um, stress distribution captures um, uh, the reality most. So uh, to conclude or in conclusion, we cannot say oh, what is the right or correct support for uh, for uh, precast members or for uh, bridge uh, details. It always depends on the configuration, of, on the stiffnesses of the adjacent parts of the structures and user must uh, or shall uh, think about it or, or maybe do some comparing between, uh, between the different types of support. So, I believe this is end of the practical part and uh, Adam, do we have some questions? Sure, we have. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, I'll take a look at some to answer them loudly. Um, So let me pick some, for example, um, if I reformulate this. Uh, so literally, what's the, what is the difference between uh, the hanging support and the patch support? These two types, this probably not, was not that clear. Mm -hmm. Because it seems similar, probably. Okay. Uh, yes, the, the application um, of this support is similar, but the main difference is that if we use a uh, hanging support, uh, it acts as a reinforcing bars uh, and it is connected by a bond model and MPC elements. 
But uh, if we use this patch support, it goes directly to reinforcement. Uh, so in uh, terms of um, uh, some hanging or this lifting anchor system, uh, a, if it's a patch support, the load is distributed to a larger area, to the reinforcement which is specified to the support. But if it's a hanger or hanging support, uh, the the reaction or the load is uh, only in this hanger and by means of uh, the interaction of concrete and this hanging branch it is transferred to to the model so I think it's clear now <laughs> okay, okay thank you <laughs> <laughs> and uh... Uh, maybe another one. Uh, so this is a question about you were mentioning the the model of of the of the finite element model, and here a uh, question is about the the bond element within this this uh, model. Um, if you maybe skip back in the presentation to the picture mm -hmm. what is the what does the bond element do uh, if i understood the question correctly okay so uh, the bond element simulates uh, the interaction between reinforcing bars and the concrete uh, and thanks to this bond element we can simulate the slip between the reinforcement and the concrete. So if the load is too high, for example, and there's tendency to pull, pull out this reinforcing bar out of the model, we will know it because uh, the calculation was stopped and um, we know that mm, uh, I need to add more reinforcement or change the diameter. So um that's why we have this bond here that it is not uh connected to a concrete uh mesh directly by some kind of rigid bond but uh it simulates the or it try it tries to simulate the real behavior between the reinforcing bar and the concrete all right it seems uh very explaining <laughs> uh, thank you so i think we'll stop now because we're running out of time and and i will just finish this um this uh presentation but the final information, and there it is. Uh, if you're interested in this topic about uh, the whole compatible stress field method and its application and the program detail and so on, <clears throat> all is, uh, all is uh, written and stored within this book that was published this summer from Professor Kaufmann from ETH Zurich University with cooperation uh, of our company Ideastatica and this is av available in PDF and in printed form as well uh, and can you can, so you can get that. Um, another thing is if you're interested in the software if you're using it and you need more capacity or if you want to um, use it uh, there is a special uh, promo um, and special offer for the end of the year so if you miss the black friday uh, you have another chance until the end of the year so you can check this out to 
save some money for the next year um, by if you want to buy the software and uh, of course after the webinar please fill in a very short survey you will find the recording that you can replay anytime and you can send to anybody for free uh, in our support center or in the YouTube channel of Idea Aesthetica. Uh, for those who haven't tried the software itself on their own, there is of course the possibility to do it for free to get the trial version that covers uh, the full functionality of, of the programs find it on our webpage ideasarica.com the 14 days free trial and in the support center you'll find uh, more information and uh, interesting things and and so on the very last thing uh, is to is for me to invite you for the last webinar of this year that's going to uh, take place next week. Uh, next Wednesday it's going to be uh, focused on steel topics and uh, um, the theme will be uh, treating uh, traps in connection design. So uh, interesting thing to not to miss and if you have missed our uh, recent webinars, for example, reinforced concrete design uh, using the CSFM method. You can replay that as well as all the others that you can see here. So uh, now let's conclude this. Thank you, Petra, for your explanations and for your presentation. Thank all of you. Uh, for coming today for this webinar and enjoy uh, the last weeks of this year. And we'll be looking forward to seeing you uh, over in the new year with our new um, series of the webinars. So bye from me. Thank you, all of you. Have a great day.